by far I would have to say other than the men's store that it is the best Hermes boutique in New York. Hey guys, my name is JPS and welcome back to my channel. I've been meaning to film this video for the longest time, but I couldn't quite figure out the best way to approach this until yesterday I finally thought to myself that I should just sit down, turn on the camera and go with the flow. So I really hope this turns out well because today we'll be talking about my absolute favorite spots to shop for luxury fashion in New York City. I've had this plan since the very beginning of this year to do a sort of a series on my channel on some of my favorite places to shop around the world. I was hoping to do some traveling this year and then 2020 happened, but just because traveling hasn't been a priority and even an option for most of us this year, that shouldn't mean that we cannot share our favorite places with each other. So that's exactly what we'll be doing today. So if you want to learn about my absolute favorite places to do some really good retail therapy in New York City, then please keep on watching. So we are starting with New York City because that's the place I know inside and out when it comes to luxury shopping. But if you guys enjoy the idea, I can definitely turn this into a series and maybe do more videos on different cities that I'm pretty familiar with when it comes to shopping. Maybe I could do one on Miami or Las Vegas because I remember when traveling was still a thing. Every single time I could go to a new place, I would do some digging and a bit of research just to become familiar with the different areas and different spots that I want to hit if I want to squeeze in some luxury shopping, which is something that I really enjoy doing because even if I'm in a new city and I don't even want to buy anything, I just want to do a little bit of browsing and window shopping, I still like to visit different stores just so I get an understanding of the culture in the city, what the city is all about. I like to have a look at their selection of products, see if there's anything unique or special that perhaps I haven't seen before. I like to talk to the people working there, see if they have any recommendations of local places to see and things to do. And just look at the architecture and the different stores. It's something that I really enjoy. Even though I'm quite loyal to the stores where I shop, doesn't matter what brand we're talking about. I'm just quite a loyal person in general. So it's something that I, I really enjoy doing wherever I am. And unfortunately, I find that there really aren't that many good resources out there for shopping, even though there are plenty of dining and where to stay, hotels and spas. When it comes to shopping, if you type in luxury shopping, I don't know, let's say Miami, more often than not, you will be directed to luxury outlets which don't get me wrong, I do love some bargain shopping, but that's not what I'm looking for necessarily if I type in luxury shopping. So I would love if these videos could become a one-stop shop for any luxury lover out there who is planning on visiting any one of these cities. And obviously we are starting with New York because that's the place I know best when it comes to shopping. But in the future, if I do a video on, let's say, I don't know, Miami or Las Vegas, I would love to know if you know any one of these places, if you're maybe a local, if you could let us know your thoughts in the comment section and if the comment section could become this collective resource of luxury shopping for anyone out there, because obviously I'm not a local at most of these places. So even though I have an understanding of some of the basics and I have my opinions and experiences, I would love if all locals could just chime in and let us know your secrets and some of the hidden gems that maybe I don't even know of when it comes to luxury shopping, luxury dining and luxury hotels. So that would be my plan with this series if you guys like the idea. But without further ado, let's jump into talking about New York City, which is a city that I love and I have to say it's probably one of the best places in the world to do some luxury shopping. So if you're visiting New York and you're staying in a hotel, you'll most likely be staying somewhere in the Midtown area, Midtown, Upper Midtown area. Most luxury hotels are located between 42nd and 59th Street, unless for some reason you're staying downtown or you're staying at the Carlisle, which is very much in the heart of the Upper East Side. Most hotels are in sort of that area. 
But there are three hotspots for luxury shopping that you want to hit, regardless of where you're staying. One of them is Uptown, which starts, I would say, good shopping starts at 57th Street and 5th Avenue. Then you definitely want to check out Soho. And then we'll also quickly touch on the Meatpacking District, which can be a hit and miss depending on what you're looking for. But that's the area with the newest Hermes store, so we'll definitely touch on that. But let's start with Uptown, which is my favorite place to shop. So if you're staying midtown, I would recommend that you start walking uptown on 5th Avenue, which you'll often hear in movies that people talk about shopping on 5th Avenue. And while there are a few stores there, it's not the best place to shop. So they have the big Cartier Mansion, which is one of the biggest Cartier stores in the world, I believe. If you watch the last, what was it, Ocean's 8, the last Ocean's 8 movie with Sandra Bullock, and, um, and Hathaway and that incredible cast, that the Cartier store that they show is actually the Cartier Mansion on Fifth Avenue. So that store is pretty there with an amazing selection of Cartier jewelry. So if you're a Cartier lover, you do want to check out that store on Fifth Avenue. They have Saks, which personally I'm not the biggest fan of. They have a Dyson store. What else do they have? They have a Valentino, which I'm not sure if that's still there because I know that they were trying to get out of their lease with everything going on, but there was a Valentino, there was Harry Winston, Gucci, and then Dolce and Gabbana, but those stores are as you get further off to the place where I would recommend that you definitely start shopping. So the place where I would recommend that you begin your luxury shopping journey is on the intersection of 57th Street, 57th Street and 5th Avenue, which is this huge intersection, you cannot miss it. And the first store that we'll talk about is the Louis Vuitton flagship store, which I think it might be one of the biggest stores in the US. There are two large stores that I've also been to that are Louis Vuitton, one in Beverly Hills on Rodeo Drive, which is also huge. And then the one in Vegas at the Crystals is also gigantic. So I think they could definitely compete with one another. But let me put it this way, the one on 57th is the best Louis Vuitton store. So each store I will try to rate based on customer service and selection in terms of what are the products that they carry, how much of it do they have. And I have to say that the Louis Vuitton store on 57th Street and uh, Fifth Avenue is one of the best Louis Vuitton stores I've ever been to. Probably, to be honest, it is the best. So if you're visiting this Louis Vuitton store, there are two entrances you can take. You can either head in on 57th Street or Fifth Avenue. Obviously, bear in mind that some of these might have been altered for the current time just to fit all the new measures that are in place. But let's imagine that we're back to a normal world. This is how this would play out. So there are two entrances that you can take and then on the ground floor, you will find all their sort of more entry level and popular bags. So if you want to buy a Louis Vuitton tote or one of their more popular bags in canvas, the ground floor is going to be the place for you to be. They also have fine jewelry downstairs. They have scarves as well as some candles. And they usually have a little island with all of their sort of new in pieces. Then there is, I don't know if they consider it a first floor. I would mainly call it a, a half floor between the ground and the first floor. There is this sort of first floor little balcony where you will find luggages, homeware, and then small leather goods and bags for men. And then the true first floor is where you will find the department for men, which if you love Louis Vuitton ready to wear and Louis Vuitton shoes for men, you will adore this floor. This is where I usually go to. Even before I look around, I immediately head up to the men's floor because that's the floor where I have always received the, be the best customer service. So what I would recommend is that if you're going to Louis Vuitton, don't even think about what you want to look at. Don't even think about what you're looking for. Immediately head up to the first or second floor. I don't know what they would consider it, but find the men's department and try to find someone there that you want to work with because the person that you choose there will be able to walk you through the entire store and they'll be help you with anything that you need. But I find that First of all, the men's department is usually not as busy as sort of the, the, the ground floor and then the women's department. So you will find someone to help you much faster. 
And I find that the customer service that I get from people working on that floor is always superior. So I would definitely recommend, that's a little tip for you, is to immediately head up to the men's floor, even if you're not interested in anything there and try to see if there is someone who's willing to work with you from that floor. Obviously, I'm not sure how it works now. I assume at the moment you will be assigned someone that you can work with if you're planning on going to the store. But if that's an option for you to just go up to the men's floor by yourself, that's what I would do personally. So you have the men's floor, which is either the first or the second floor. If you go up one more floor, then you will find the women's department where they have a huge selection of women's ready to wear bags and shoes. And then there is another floor, which is for their repair center. So if there's anything you ever need to get repaired or dropped off, that's where you will be able to do that. And then on the same floor, there's also a private suite for private shopping and private events, which if you want to drop some serious money at Louis Vuitton, I'm sure you will be invited to. But that's sort of the basic layout of the Louis Vuitton store. And the reason why I'm going into so much details about this store is because it's one of my favorite stores in New York and in the world when it comes to Louis Vuitton. So I wanted to paint an accurate picture for you guys. It's a great store when it comes to customer service. It really depends on who you're, who you're working with. This is the first store that we were talking about, so I don't want to be too generous, but I would say it's maybe a high six, low seven when it comes to customer service. And when it comes to selection, it has to be, I don't know, a nine. I mean, they pretty much have everything when it comes to Louis Vuitton. So that's on the corner of 57th and 5th Avenue. Right across the street from the Louis Vuitton store, you will find Bergdorf. Bergdorf Goodman is one of the most iconic department stores in New York City. It's a high-end luxury department store that is owned by Neiman Marcus, but it is sort of a very different shopping experience that, than what you're used to from Neiman's. It is definitely much more elegant and refined, even just because of the building itself. The building is a really old school, ornate and elegant building. And the first place that you'll probably want to visit is their Van Cleef Boutique, which is inside of Bergdorf, but you can also enter from the outside. It used to be the only Van Cleef store in New York for years and years and years. Now they have another one in Hudson Yards. But the one in Bergdorf is absolutely stunning. If you love Van Cleef, you'll love the experience of going in there. It's truly like a little treasure chest within Bergdorf. It's quite a small store, but their selection is really good and the customer service is, is pretty exceptional, I have to say. So you will probably want to check out the Von Cleef store there in case you're into fine jewelry. Within Bergdorf, they have a little Chanel boutique, they have a little Goyard section, and then downstairs you'll have all your bags. If you go up to the second floor, you will find your shoe heaven. They have a huge selection of women's shoes. By the way, this burglar that we're talking about is only for women. I mean, anyone can buy whatever they want, but they exclusively carry women's pieces. And as you go up to different floors, each floor specializes in something different. So some floors are more focused on contemporary designers. Others are focused on bridal and more sort of gowns and couture wear. So each floor you'll find something different. And as I mentioned, they exclusively carry women's pieces. But right across the street from Bergdorf, on one of the corners is Louis Vuitton. But if you move a little bit further up on the block, as you get closer to 58th Street, you will find Bergdorf for men, which is the same concept, the same experience, but it's with men's ready to wear and men's pieces, which I don't usually go to, or I didn't, I, I never really went to Bergdorf for men unless I was specifically looking for something or I think it would be a good spot for you to hit. If you are maybe traveling by yourself and you need to buy something for a boyfriend, for a husband, for your son, for your anyone in your family who you want to buy a gift for because they pretty much carry everything basic so you can get a lot of shopping in in just one spot. Not necessarily a must see but I still wanted to mention that. But let's quickly walk backwards and go back to 57th Street, which is where we started with Louis Vuitton. Now, 57th Street, I would recommend that you start walking down towards to your right, towards Madison Avenue. And on that street between 5th Avenue and Madison Avenue on 57th Street, you'll have all your sort of high-end luxury flagship stores, starting with Louis Vuitton, as I mentioned. Then right next to Louis Vuitton, I think you go on to Saint Laurent. Next to Saint Laurent, 
I'm not sure about the order, but these are the stores that you'll find there. You'll have a Miu Miu, you'll have a Burberry, you'll have, I think there's a David Yorman that was opening on the same side as Louis Vuitton. And then the next sort of larger store that I think is worth mentioning is Chanel. And if you love Chanel, this is going to be heaven on earth for you because the Chanel boutique just opened up, I think late last year, it was under renovation for pretty much a year, if not longer than that. And they opened this gigantic Chanel boutique. It's I think four or five stories. I don't know if I should go into that much detail again. Maybe I'll do this on this one. Maybe this should be the last one that I do this on. Otherwise we'll be here all day. But I know that Chanel is such a popular boutique to visit. So I think it's important for you to get an understanding of what you'll find. So on the first floor, you will have, not the first, the ground floor as you enter, you will find some of their more popular bags. They have quite an extensive bag area. They have some more sort of new in accessories on the ground floor. And then in the back, they have a section for fine jewelry. On the first floor, you'll find their shoes, accessories, and then I think they have a pretty big makeup counter. On the second floor, it will be all clothing. Same thing on the third floor. And then on the fourth floor, you have some private suites for shopping. But basically the two top floors are ready to wear. Underneath that is shoes. And then on the bottom floor is mainly bags and fine jewelry. So if you love Chanel, it's a must see. It's one of the biggest Chanel stores in the US. So if you're all about Chanel, this is going to be a one of a kind experience for you. Next to Chanel, you have Dior Men, which is a boutique exclusively for their men's line. And then right next to it, you have quite a large Dior boutique, which carries their women's line. You'll have bags on the ground floor, accessories, leather accessories, and fine jewelry. And then on the first floor, you'll have shoes and a huge selection of uh, clothing for women. And then by Dior, you will have Fendi, which is again, a huge Fendi store with pretty good selection and pretty good customer service. I would actually say that Fendi has probably the best customer service out of Chanel and Dior. Chanel, when it comes to selection, has to be probably a nine, a 10. They have a huge selection. Customer service is a five, it's fine. Dior in terms of selection is Again, pretty good, huge selection, probably an eight or a nine, and customer service is of average, maybe a little above average, so maybe a five or a six. And then Fendi, when it comes to selection, absolutely incredible. They have a great selection of Fendi and really good customer service. I would probably give them a seven or an eight for their customer service. And then with Fendi, we hit the end of the block. And what I would recommend that you do from here is that you start walking up on Madison Avenue instead of walking further down. And as you start walking up town, you'll come across a couple of boutiques. So you'll find a Balenciaga, you have a new Celine store, which I just call Saint Laurent 2.0 because the new store is pretty much identical to any other Saint Laurent store. And so is their selection, let's be honest right now. But as you get to 62nd Street, you will make the exciting discovery of the Hermes flagship store on Madison Avenue, where you will find not one, but two Hermes boutiques right across from one another. So on the west side, you have the Men's Boutique, which is a standalone boutique. It's the only one in the world where Hermes has a boutique just for men. And then across the street, you will have the women's boutique, which is, I think it's the biggest, not in terms of size, but definitely in terms of how much product they carry and in terms of how popular they are. I think it is the most popular and probably best performing boutique in the US. So if you love Hermes, this is going to be a piece of heaven for you. But let's start with the mass boutique, which as I mentioned is the only standalone boutique when it comes to their men's pieces. As you enter the men's boutique on the ground floor, you will find leather goods, bags, some home pieces. They have ties and scarves downstairs. So essentially sale for men. On the first floor, they have shoes, a little bit of ready to wear and belts. And then on the second floor, it's pretty much all ready to wear some watches, some fine jewelry, and then a couple of bags spread out here and there. And then they even have a floor that's reserved for their tailoring services. 
So if you ever get anything altered or custom made by Hermes, that's where it will happen. It will happen on the top floor of this boutique. And I mean, there's really not much more to say other than if there's anything you ever want from Hermes that was designed for their Hermes line, you'll most likely find it here. They have a huge selection of Hermes for men. You can pretty much find anything and everything here. Their selection has to be, I guess, a 10 out of 10 when it comes to their men's line. And the customer service, I must say, is incredible. This is where I personally started my Hermes journey. So the Mans Boutique does hold a really special place in my heart. And I've, I've had some of the best experiences there. So because of that reason, I have to give them probably a nine out of 10 for customer service. It's just a really, really, really nice boutique. And then across the street, you will find the women's boutique, which as I mentioned is I believe the best performing store in the US. So they'll have a huge selection of pretty much everything Hermes. As you enter the store, you'll have to your right, you will find all their fashion jewelry pieces. They have a huge selection of fashion jewelry. In the back, they have silk, and then they have some belts and some fragrance to your left. If you head down to the basement, that's where they keep all the good stuff. Their basement is small leather goods and then bags. And then if you go up to the first floor, that's going to be shoes ready to wear. And then they have an incredibly large selection of fine jewelry. On the third floor, you'll find homeware, tableware, and then they also have their after sales desk there. And the New York boutique is one of the only boutiques in the US that has on-site craftsmen. So if there's anything you ever need to drop off, that's where you can do that. And sometimes you will get a chance to actually speak to an Hermes craftsman if they are not too busy. Sometimes they will come out and look at the piece for you on the spot. So if there, you have any issues with um, any of your Hermes pieces, you can drop it off here. And if you guys would want me to do a video on my experience with their sort of repair service, then definitely let me know in the comment section. I can absolutely do that. They have an incredible team for um, dealing with after sales. Their craftsmen are incredible and so are the people working at this desk. And then there is one more floor above the homeware section, which is their shoe department. Their shoe department is separate, even though they sell shoes on the first floor as well. And going up to that area of the store is just such a unique experience because pretty much the entire store is just your regular Hermes experience. They have the same sort of interior that all Hermes stores have, but the top floor is quite different because they have this glass dome over their shoe department. So you feel like you're standing up in the clouds and then the entire room around you is white so it really does feel like a heavenly experience and it's shoes just everywhere pretty much every single surface is covered in their shoes so if you're a shoe lover I don't think you'll be able to leave without buying something there when it comes to selection I mean it's a 10 out of 10 if you shop at a smaller Hermes boutique and you often request transfers. I'm sure you've heard the person you're working with at your home boutique saying that, oh, Madison has it because the Madison Avenue boutique has the largest selection and the largest stock of Hermes pieces. So they have to they have to be a 10 out of 10. And then customer service, probably a two. And it's quite interesting because the women's and the men's boutique will not be separate much longer. Hermes is actually moving their flagship I think they were supposed to move it early next year. I had a chance to preview their new store. I was invited to attend an event the day before the renovation began, which I think was the beginning of this year. I definitely have a video covering the event, so in case you're interested in seeing the new space. And I think I also filmed both the current men's and women's boutiques. So I'll make sure to have that video linked up here. There are two other stores when it comes to Hermes in New York. Hermes has a boutique on Wall Street, which is a really, really small boutique. Their selection is not the best, I have to say. I remember I used to work on Wall Street for a couple of years and um, I used to walk past that store all the time. And the customer service is fine, but their selection was never outstanding. So I never decided to shop there. 
And then Hermes has their newest and third store, well technically fourth if you consider the men's and the women's two separate boutiques. You technically have their fourth boutique in uh, the meatpacking district, which we'll move on to in a second. So that's all about Hermes. And then from 62nd Street, I would recommend that you keep walking up if you want to do a little bit more luxury shopping. I would say that it's worth going up until maybe 72nd Street. There are still more stores above 72nd, but it's sort of more spread out. Let's quickly move on to Soho, which um, I'll just quickly touch on because I've been talking for nearly two hours at this point, so I have no idea how I'm going to edit this video. But Soho is also a great hotspot for shopping. You will find, again, sort of the same household brand names that you will find uptown, just in a different environment. Uptown is definitely a little bit more sort of elegant and refined in terms of the shopping experience. Soho is definitely a little bit more laid back. And that is also reflected in the selection of products. But you have your just your regular sort of household names, Louis Vuitton, Dior, Balenciaga, all these different stores. And most stores in Soho, when it comes to luxury stores, are in between three streets. Broadway is sort of the main street that's actually running through the entire island, but it's not really an important street in Soho when it comes to shopping. You won't really find any luxury stores there. You will find more like high street stores, so you will find H&M, Zara, and all those type of stores on Broadway. But you want to go to the west and there are three streets that will have all your big luxury brands. So you have Mercer, Green and Wooster. Those are the three big streets that will have all your luxury stores. Two stores that I would like to point out which are both in Soho is the Louis Vuitton pop-up space. So Louis Vuitton has a large store in Soho but right beside their store in the corner they have this tiny little store that I think they acquired. I'm not sure if it's owned by them or if they're renting it. It's been part of Louis Vuitton for at least two to three years. And that store gets completely redecorated when Louis Vuitton comes out with a new collection or they have a new campaign going. They completely redo the store and it becomes more of an experience to, to see rather than shop. Obviously, you can buy Louis Vuitton pieces there but they completely redo it to fit their most recent launch or campaign. So it's definitely something that you want to check out. And then Dior just opened their men's store in Soho at the beginning of this year, maybe towards the end of last year. No, I think it was the beginning of this year that they opened that. They have a brand new men's store in Soho, which is really, really beautiful. Great customer service, great selection. And everything else is, is just, you know, the same thing that you'll find uptown just in a more laid back environment other than Loewe because Loewe also has a store in Soho so if you love the brand Loewe you will find one of their stores there and I think that's pretty much it when it comes to Soho and then last but not least let's quickly touch on the meatpacking district which is sort of a hidden miss neighborhood when it comes to luxury shopping at one point it was all the craze and you heard rumors of all these brands wanting to open their boutiques in the meatpacking district. Right now there aren't many of them left. Maybe it's been two years at this point. Hermes opened their boutique in the meatpacking district, which people were, before the store opened, people were saying that it's going to be this new state-of-the-art boutique concept and it's going to be the most modern and contemporary shopping experience that Hermes has ever done. And to be honest with you, it's not that different from any other Hermes store out there. It's a nice boutique, but that's pretty much it. It's not any different from any of the other boutiques, but it is quite a big store. Their selection, I have to say, is not great. Even though the store space is quite large, their selection is it's not the best. I've been there a couple of times and I it was never easy for me to find anything. But the customer service is pretty good. And if you want to go to a store that is much, much, much less busy than the one on Madison Avenue, I would definitely recommend that you check out this one. By far, I would have to say, other than the men's store, that it is the best RMS boutique in New York. So if you're looking for an RMS store in New York to check out, Maybe you want to go to the meatpacking one. And then just one more store that I'm going to give a quick shout out to is the Chrome Hearts Boutique in West Village, which is technically not meatpacking, but it's not too far from the RMS store. Maybe it's like a 10 minute walk. And if you're into Chrome Hearts, 
this is going to be the store for you to be because it's one of the largest and coolest Chrome Heart stores. They have everything, fine jewelry, ready to wear, and they have a special home section. So I'm not sure what's going on right now, but in the past you were able to go upstairs. They have sort of a private um, room and a private floor upstairs where they house all their furniture and all their homeware pieces. And at one point they had this ginormous American flag up on one of their walls. And the American flag was made of, I think, over 200 carats of diamonds and silver. It was put together by hand and it was just the most insane piece. I think they were asking for over, I think two and a half million dollars for it. So if that's still there, maybe you can ask to, to have a look at that in case you're into Chrome Hearts. And this is it guys. This completes today's video on luxury shopping in New York. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you like the idea and if you do, then please let me know if there are any other cities you would like me to talk about or if you're familiar with shopping in New York. Are there any other places that you would recommend? Is there anything that I missed? Do let us know in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.